A few days ago, Tim from UVS Games dropped his design teaser article that he drops before preview season of every new set, and we got a lot of really, really cool sneak peeks into this upcoming set. And even though we're going to be seeing all of these cards very shortly during preview season, I believe they said during um, Wednesday Weekly Webcam that the previews would start on Monday. So even though we're going to be seeing all these cards very soon, let's go ahead and the weekend before, let's start theorizing on our own of what we think the set will look like from Tim's article. I'm going to go through each thing that Tim mentioned, and then I'm going to just talk about how hype that makes me. Um, here's all the things that we can expect. I'm going to tackle each of these one at a time. Okay, first to start, more common and uncommon cards aimed at improving the draft experience. So just out of curiosity, I went and looked at the past um, set lists and I took out the characters. And so in set one, we had 80 out of 128 cards that were commons and uncommons, so 63%. Set two, about 64%, very similar. Set three, 58%. Set four, 58%. And then set five, we were back up to that 63% number. So Jetburn, we know it's a 153 card set and we know there's gonna be 17 characters. So there's going to be 136 you know, non-character cards in the set. What portion of those will be common and uncommon? You know, will, is the, does making it higher mean that they're just going to stick at this, at this 63% number, which is higher than the 58% that they briefly dropped down to? Or does this mean we're going to go to like 70 75%? I think this would be really, really neat. Again, just, just helping out draft, just helping out sealed which are really, really important formats to the game's growth going forward because it's how a new player gets into the game. And you want to make sure that the new player has an amazing time as soon as they come in. So also, you know, I bought a, uh, I bought a case of Undaunted Raid and, you know, there was a lot of cards where, like Rejuvenating Smash, for example, I only had one Rejuvenating Smash in my case. Or I opened four boxes of League of Villains and I never opened a single copy of Double Trouble. Not the most expensive card to buy on the secondary market, but it was a little annoying not to open any of it. So more common and uncommon cards probably means that you have a greater chance of getting the uh, rares and ultra rares. So I am all here for this change. We return to more 1A students as playable characters. I am assuming this means that we are getting Midoriya 5 and Shoto and Bakugo 4. Other 1A students, because this arc is covering, the card game should be covering what happens right after the overhaul arc. So we're going to have the remedial course exam, which of course focuses heavily on Bakugo and Shoto as they failed the provisional license exam. I should say that uh, there are going to be spoilers in here. So if you have not watched the show up until where Jetburn, the card game, is covering, then don't watch this video. Okay, <laughs> I said that a little too late, I suppose. But so we got the remedial course exam arc, and then we're going to get the school festival, and then we're going to get the uh, the um, endeavor, or the pro hero rankings arc. And I'm not sure if we're going beyond that. If we're going to go to those class one A, one B matches, the endeavor agency um, trainees arc. It does seem like you know we're getting the Ochako Toga rival decks. So. And of course, Ochako and Toga, I believe they fight a little bit in the provisional license exam because Toga pretends to be Kami. And I think they get into like a skirmish. I can't quite remember. But then they really fight later on. I think it's like season five, season six. So, I, But it seems that they're making that the Clash deck, which I agree with. It's a great decision for a Clash deck, but it's a little out of order, it seems, from everything else in the set. I assume we're also getting Jiro as she takes center stage for the school festival. Naturally, she's going to be the best musician. Um, I'm really not sure on other students coming in, though. Next thing, we get character trait keywords. We already knew about this. We can see Hawks has pro hero and the villain keyword both. And we've also seen like a 1A student. I think we've seen like teacher keywords. I'm not sure if we've seen other character keywords yet. And then we're getting two new villains. So this, you know, the series, the arcs that the card game is covering for this set as a little light on villains, you know, we get Gentle Criminal, who personally, I hated the Gentle Criminal arc. Um, I really did not like Gentle Criminal in the school festival. It took a lot for me just to push through those episodes, and I love My Hero Academia. Now, I'm not somebody who ever rewatches things, so my memory is pretty spotty when I look back on things, but uh, it took it took a lot for me to push through these arcs, but I absolutely loved the uh, 
Endeavor versus Nomu fight and when Endeavor fully takes over being the number one hero and you can just see him bring on, you know, take that weight on his shoulders and the and the people, the public really start to trust him. So, but Gentle Criminal, uh, he's probably coming in the card game, I imagine. La Brava, I think that's her name, La Brava. Um, I imagine that she's going to be an asset instead of a character following the uh, the pattern that we've been seeing with children with uh, Coda and Eri. And then we're definitely going to be getting uh, Nomu 2, Hood Nomu or High End Nomu. I imagine that they're just going to call this a new villain and they're going to, uh, instead of just saying Nomu 2. So I'm interested to see how that works. There's a few other villains. Like if we fast forward to the Endeavor Agency arc, we have this guy. I forgot his name. This guy, I think his name is Ending. Um, we get a few more villains. They're very, very side players. I, I wouldn't uh, blame you if you don't remember them. All right, new terminology to denote long-standing game text. We've already seen a little bit of this with Vash the Stampede. He gets Tenacious and Mill. Tenacious is the ability to be playable while committed, and Mill means to discard the top card of your deck. Very neat. I'm not really sure what else they could say. I know it was being tossed around that you could say, like, um, cancel. Um, you, yeah, I'm not. I'm really not sure what else they're going to I imagine that it's not just going to be Tenacious and Mill. I imagine we're going to see a few more new terminologies introduced into the game, and I am here for that and making it easier to read the cards. Some long-awaited pro heroes. These are some pro heroes that I remembered from this arc. Of course, we've all already seen pro hero rankings, which shows Mirko, Edshot, Hawks, and Endeavor. We're missing number three, Best Genus, because I believe he was hurt. Um, so Best Genus is uh, number three. And then we've got uh, the Dragon Hero, Ryukyu, at number, I believe she's like number 10 in the rankings. Um, I remember Mount Lady and Kamui being at the school festival, and we've already been confirmed that we're getting Mount Lady 2. I am not sure about Kamui 2. I wouldn't be surprised. I'd be a little surprised, but uh, I'm sure he'd be welcomed by the community to have another character card. Um, this is very exciting for me personally, because when I started this game, I chose Mount Lady a year ago. When I first got into the game, I was just building Mount Lady decks and uh, just spent a month or two months really just crafting a the best Mount Lady deck that I could. And that was how I learned the game. And she was just a lot of fun to play. I haven't touched the deck since. And I know it's gotten a lot better with the uh, League of Villains cards that she got. But we also saw ecto oops, each time I we also saw ectoplasm and hound dog during the gentle criminal arc. Although I don't think they really do anything. I think they kind of show up after everything's after Deku and gentle criminal have fought it out. But uh, you know, getting a hound dog would be would be nice. And then we've also got the remedial course exam arc, and of course, gang orca and present Mike and Endeavor and All Might are all there. So maybe this is finally when we see Gang Orca get a credit, get a, another character card. I imagine Present Mike's not going to be getting a third. And then Unblockable Attacks. This is very, very interesting. We have not had this in My Hero, but I searched it on UVS Ultra. And again, I've only ever played the My Hero only format. I've played stand. I played a uh, three-round standard tournament side event at the HLC, and I was just using my LGS store. Um, store employees deck there but uh i went ahead and searched unblockable on uvs ultra and found these three cards let's just read them together we got brutality a three dev three mid three three mid block it says uh breaker three after you play this attack if your opponent is at three or less vitality this attack is unblockable and gains flash and it's infinity so anybody can play it in my hero this seems very very strong just to say you're dead <laughs> um, you can't block this and it's got flash I imagine um, I was told uh, that standard has a lot more um, defense abilities like as responses and so this card was not as cracked as it seems coming from an MHA only format and then we have fight like you mean it let's see where does it say it's an action. Remove. If your stunner weapon attack is not blocked, your next attack is plus four damage and is unblockable. Seems very good. Uh, and then 16 instant slashes. It says, if you have exactly 16 cards in your discard pile, this attack is unblockable. That seems very, very arbitrary, but I guess it goes with the name of the card. Um, but uh, I don't really like things like that are so arbitrary like that. So is the My Hero only format ready for unblockable attacks? I'm not sure. We don't really have you know 
Like, Standard got this card, Revoke, that just got to cancel enhances, and it was basically free. MHA format gets cards like Nullify, which are three diff actions that don't clear from your card pool to cancel and enhance. Or we have, like, League of Villains, which is an asset, and then you have to commit it, and you have to commit a foundation, and it's a four check, and it's a four diff to cancel and enhance. So it feels like I'm not sure the MHA format is ready for unblockable attacks, but we shall see. A musical instrument. I'm assuming this is Jiro's guitar or, you know, Bakugo's drums. We have a character who likes a cards with a blank text box. So I searched, um, how did I search this? I said, yeah, I said blank text box on, um, on UVS Ultra and I found Caden from 2020 Red Horizon intro deck says your attacks with a printed blank text box gain powerful three. That's fine. That's that's not going to make me play a printed blank card. Uh, response, after you play an attack card with a printed blank text box, that card gains either stun, two, stun one, breaker one, or you may add one card from your hand to your momentum. And he's a six-hander. Um, this character seems really bad. <laughs> Just coming from the MHA format, right? Like, uh, if you are going to play an attack with a printed, with a blank text box, that needs to be a seriously well-statted attack. Like a four diff, two high six, that is not going to get it done to be played by anybody. You would have to be like four diff, um, five high seven, you know? Four diff, five high seven, blank. I'm sure I'm sure a lot of characters would play that just for the stats. Now you're getting five plus seven, 12 divided by four. You're getting three stats per difficulty. That's the A tier. Um, if you follow my formula that I like to use on judging if an attack is good. And even though you don't have any effects, having an A tier stats is good enough. But having B tier stats with no effects is just never going to be played. So I kind of, personally, I am worried about this because it feels like this character is going to need a lot of support. So it's probably going to be a character getting a full kit. You know, getting at least four or five attacks. I'm not sure how many attacks come in the kit. I think it's four attacks, four foundations. Um, or maybe it's five and three. But uh, yeah, he's probably going to need a full kit. You know, you can't just be a character getting one attack. Because I don't even think we have any attacks with blank text box in the MHA format. We have Delaware Smash, but that still has uh, Flash and Punch. So it doesn't really work. Um, so my my fear of this is that the character... Like, this is not going to get it done in the MHA format. This seems pretty terrible. Um, and so the character is going to have to be kind of cracked to make the attacks work. But then the problem is nobody else will play those attacks. Um, and I don't think that's very fun from a design standpoint. I think it's fun when you have attacks that work for a character, but then other characters can also incorporate those attacks into their lists. And I just don't see any other characters in the My Hero format playing attacks that are blank. Again, unless they are super well statted, like four diff, five high, look, five high seven, you know, four high eight, something around there. So then he uh, had some support here, like uh, commit after you play an attack card with a draw one card. That's fine, but uh, commit draw one card. I mean, we have this foundation all over the place, and it doesn't require you playing blank text box attacks. Your attack gets plus one damage for free on everything. That's fine, but we get tons of things that say plus one damage for free on everything on a two diff. Um, one diff, two low block commit. After you play an attack, your rival commits one foundation. If the card you played has a printed blank text box, flip the committed foundation. That seems fine. You commit, and then they commit, and then you flip it. Um, but again, this isn't this isn't strong enough to get me to play print um, printed blank attacks. So I am really nervous about this. I uh, just because I don't see how it's going to be used by other characters, and you know, also printed blank attacks aren't really fun. You know, like uh, more text normally equals more fun. All right, a double cycle of attacks with drawbacks. Okay, so my hype here is like one out of ten. <laughs> a double cycle of attacks with drawbacks. So I asked in the um, Discord what a cycle of attacks meant, and it meant that there's four attacks, and they between the four of them, they have all 12 symbols of the game. So they all have different symbols, and so they encompass all the symbols of the game, and they all have a similar ability. So in this case, or a similar cost. 
like in this case, these are all Heroes Clash foundations, and they all have, they're all one diffs that say destroy one foundation, and they're all two blocks. So they're very, very similar. Of course, uh, I think feeling cute and full on attack mode are definitely better than these two, but uh, they all have their place in decks that want them. And uh, yeah, so a double cycle of attacks with drawbacks, I'm pretty excited with this. The most obvious drawback that I can see is just more attacks that say like lose three health, do something similar to um, Dual Needle Lunge and Tetra Terror. And Dual Needle Lunge and Tetra Terror are very, very fun attacks to play. Um, so maybe like lose a health or maybe it's something like discard a card and you get to do something or flip two of your own foundations. Um, what else would be something? Discard a momentum doesn't really feel like it'd be innovative enough. Um, so flip your own foundations, discard cards, maybe uh, put a momentum on top of your deck. That would be interesting, something along those lines. So I'm ex I am excited to uh, see what this is. A spiritual reprint of a banned card. Okay, here are the eight banned cards in MHA. Frog Lashing has already come back spiritually as uh, Meteor for Frotskis. Um, Crow and Frog Takedown, I mean... We have tons of cards that ignore progressive difficulty and ready, so that's already pretty much back. I don't think they're going to bring back a card like ready, get, set, go. I don't think uh, one with nature is coming back. I think of these eight, since we know that Jiro is very, very likely to come back in the game and a musical instrument is coming in that's likely to be Jiro's guitar, which is probably going to be an asset, I would fully expect some form of unwavering slash to come back into the game and be usable with Jiro and the guitar. Something along these lines. Now, I when I started playing the game, Unwavering Slash was already banned, so I have no experience with this card whatsoever. It seems amazing that you get to uh, ready a foundation, draw a card. So it's basically a 4-diff, four 4-mid-4 four four that draws. And you get to discard one card, build one asset, immediately face up. So how they would print this back into the game, I'm not exactly sure. Honestly, Unwavering Slash feels a little fine. I guess it would be cracked with some of the foundations, with some of the assets that we have now, but it doesn't feel, you know, like it could easily be argued that Unwavering Slash is uh, not as good as like repeated 100% Smash. Um, so I definitely see some iteration of Unwavering Slash coming back in set six. All right, Pro Hero Ranking Foundations, you know, to rank the pros. So I went back and listed out the top 10 pros according to the uh, TV show, and it went Endeavor, Hawks, Best Genus, Edshot, Mirko, Crust, Kamui, Wash, Yoroi, Musha, Ryukyu. So of these last five, the only ones I know really well are Kamui, Wash, and Ryukyu. I've never really heard of this guy, and, and I saw a picture of him, and I was like, I still can't remember this guy. And Crust I sort of remember, but not super well. I imagine we're just going to focus on these five, imagine they'll all get characters of their own, and then they'll all get foundations of their own as well. Similar to like the uh, Nezure Chan of the Big Three, Lemillion of the Big Three, and um, Sun Eater of the Big Three. All right, an alternate win condition. We already have one alternate win condition with Price for Peace, but nobody plays Price for Peace. Um, so I looked up on UVS Ultra and I found some past cards at, that uh, had alternate win conditions. Let's just read some of them. We had this character from like 2016 that was one hand size, one health. If Heidi has five different characters with Krieger, I don't know how to pronounce this, and their name attached to form Das der Krieger, I don't and, and win the game. Something like Exodia or something. I have no idea what's going on here. I would love for someone who was actually around. Is this like a joke card or is this like a real card? What is going on here? Um, let's go to stage kill. Um, deadlock enhance. If the printed damage of your attack is greater than your opponent's current vitality, you win the game. So it doesn't even have to do damage. You just play this action from your hand and you win the game if they're in deadlock. Only playable if there's a terrain card in either player's staging area. This is interesting. This is interesting. I, uh, I wouldn't mind this. Uh, fatality. Okay, this has a lot of text. Let's just find the win condition here. Okay, deadlock combo enhance, and it combos with a fatality. If your opponent is at desperation, which I believe meant less than half health, you win the game. This ability cannot be canceled. 
So all you have to do is have two fatalities in your hand and you win, and they're in deadlock. This seems too powerful. <laughs> um, and the uh, the artwork, uh, you know, doesn't really fit with my hero. All right, distraction, destruction. We get this uh, five diff, four low eight. It's a one check. Enhance, if your opponent has eight or more momentum, you win the game. Basically, if you're playing Amajiki, sideboard this card. <laughs> And you just win. <laughs> you know, as soon as they get their eight momentum, just slam this card down and you got the game. I'm not really sure I like any of these, if I'm honest. Um, so I'm hoping this alternate win condition, I'm not sure of an alternate win condition that I would like. Of these four, I didn't mind the one for stage kill the most because one, they have to be in deadlock. Two, you have to have a terrain out and you're still playing this uh, two def four check action. Let's see its other form. Remove one asset card from either player's staging area. If your opponent is at deadlock, draw one card. So that's good. Yeah, I I wouldn't mind this action coming into the My Hero format. So something like that. But uh, I'm not sure if I'm hesitant or excited about the alternate win condition. I guess I should say I'm anxious to see what this is. New game text. All right, I'm just going to go through these. I'm going to rate each of them one to three fire emojis based on how excited I am. Okay, first one, enhance. This attack cannot be blocked by copies of cards in your rival's card pool. I'm going to give this one fire. Um, just because this is, uh, it doesn't seem that good most of the time. I suppose it could be good if you had some sort of ability to choose a card in your rival's discard pile, put it in their card pool, and then say this. Maybe there's like a character that does that. Like if you know your, your opponent is playing Faith Shield deck and you're able to like take a Faith Shield from their discard pile and put it into their card pool and then say that you can't block with Faith Shields. Um, but it uh, doesn't seem great. Maybe I'm really wrong on this. Is this a past enhance that was really powerful and standard someone tell me because i am not sure but it doesn't seem that good i guess it could be uh response uh, maybe if they have like struggling with studies out you call it out and then now if they even if they struggle with studies that card back into their hand they can't block with it maybe something like that uh respond discard one momentum after the start phase seal one rival foundation i am all in on this i love more board control coming into the game and uh, more ways to spend momentum other than just powerful and EX and, you know, attacks like that. So uh, I am all in for board control. Enhance. If you are not in deadlock, this attack gets plus one damage for each of your ready foundations. I am in on this. I'm not all the way because, again, it's only if you're not in deadlock. But it also doesn't say non-throw. You know, it doesn't say this non-throw attack. So you could play a throw as your first attack and give it 10 damage. You know, play a five diff throw, check a five, you have 10 foundations, you just gave your throw 10 damage. Seems really, really good. Enhance, if you are not in deadline. Oh yeah, this is not a character. I'm thinking of this like this is a foundation or a character. There is no way this is gonna be on a foundation or character. That's cracked. It's gonna be on an attack and it's not gonna be on a throw attack. <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys, it's late at night and I'm just going through this. I know I'm going slow on this video, but I'm just having fun. Um, more just uh, entertaining myself here. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, this is definitely going to be on a non-throw attack. So if you're not in deadlock, this attack is plus one damage. And then it's probably going to be like a three damage or like a two damage in attack or something. So I would be really hyped if this was a foundation. It's definitely not going to be. Um, you may choose not to clear this card during the end phase. I am excited about this one. I love cards with this design that uh, you don't want to clear it and it's going to give you some sort of benefit. We saw uh, UVS Games try to do this with Undaunted Raid with a point blank shot. Um, just that, you know, having it in your card pool on defense is doing something. It's giving all the opponent's attacks minus two speed. And then you could keep it and not clear it um, during your opponent's end phase if you're a chronostasis, and then it's giving everything plus one speed, and you could just replay it as chronostasis. Or we also saw it with the um, that like Kirishima punch that did something that uh, said like you could remove it, you could keep it in your card pool, and then on their turn you could remove it and take a 
attack down to printed damage. I think that was it. I might be misremembering. I can't remember the name of the card right now. It's like red, red punch, um, something like that. But uh, yeah, neither of those were quite powerful enough to really see play. So I, you know, I'm excited that they're looking at this again, and they're going to, of course, up the power level of the card probably. Um, Let's see, response, commit one foundation. After an attack is played, it gets plus X or minus X speed. X equals the difficulty of the committed foundation. I am 99.99% sure that this is a character ability for Nomu, for high-end Nomu. And the reason for that is that, if you remember, we look at the card frame update um, article, we had this five diff foundation that was dangerous hybrid. When attempting to play this card as a form, it gets minus three difficulty. So it's a two difficulty when you attempt to play it as a form. And then also it has this enhanced discarded momentum. This attack is plus two speed or minus two damage. Playable while committed, right? So this response feels like a Nomu, like Nomu is going to say committed foundation. It gets plus X or minus X speed. It's going to equal the committed foundation. And then of course with this, Nomu is saying minus five speed or plus five speed. Like, that's awesome. So the Nomu 1 was making big damage, and it seems like Nomu 2 or high-end Nomu is going to make big speed. And then, you know, you can commit, like, a dangerous hybrid, and it's still going to be playable while committed. So I am, again, 99.99% sure that this is Nomu 2, and I am big hyped for this. This seems like a lot of fun for Nomu to do. Um, villain Enhanced, Tenacious Flip. So this is playable while committed. Your next check to play a card gets plus one. Okay, I mean, I always like things that uh, counts as, you know, basically it's flipping, so it's a one-time use. But, uh, you know, on that lethal attack string, your one foundation became two foundations. So that's worth it. Uh, enhance, your attack with no abilities gets plus one speed. Again, I am just out on this, your attack with no abilities, your blank text box. I am just out on this design space. I might be wrong. Again, I've only been playing this game for a year. I might be totally wrong and I'll come back and I will admit I'm wrong if it ends up being a lot of fun to play. I just don't think that attacks with blank text box and no abilities are gonna be fun. And uh, I don't think they're gonna be powerful and I don't think they're gonna be playable by other characters other than the one that's giving these no ability cards, big things. But plus one speed is not going to do it. I mean, plus one speed. That's better be like a zero def, you know, for this to be worth it. All right, combo enhance. This attack is plus X damage. X equals the printed damage of the preceding attack in your card pool. This is pretty nice. That's uh, interesting. You know, it's similar to that other attack that we saw where it was the uh, plus X damage. X equals your ready foundations if you're not in deadlock. Here we're saying it's going to be your preceding attack. That's interesting. Enhance mill one, your rival mills one. Okay, uh, that's fine. Um, I'm, I'm not excited about that. That just is, you know. All right, new keyword combinations. And it looks like I forgot to uh, make these come in later. So let me just say a few things about these keywords. One, we are getting... Um, Charge, Flash, Slam, and Taunt. Who does a character sound like? Who is a character that wants Charge and Flash? Jiro <laughs> is definitely, you know, it's just, this seems like it's going to be on an attack that's playable by both Jiro 1 and Jiro 2. We get uh, Fury and Ranged. That to me is just Screams Endeavor 3. We get uh, Breaker 2, Charge, and Tech. Hopefully this is given some uh, May and chronostasis symbols for more tech support. I love breaker two attacks. Um, ranged and combo with breaker. This makes me sense, you know, this sounds like there's gonna be a character with a heavy focus on breaker and breaker is just one of my favorite uh, keyword abilities in the game. So I am hyped about this one. A punch and weapon, uh, that's fine. Uh, slam and deadlock stun four. I like deadlock stun four. Okay, here's my only beef with these keyword combos. Why do we all... This punch and weapon just kind of gets me. Like, um, right now in the game, there's like eight keywords, right? And there's like four that don't really matter whatsoever, and there's four that get all the support. So charge gets a lot of support, ranged gets a lot of support, fury gets a lot of support, punch gets a lot of support. 
feels like every single attack has one of those keywords on it. There's a ton of characters that are keyworded into those four keywords. Charge, Fury, Ranged, Punch, you're going to have a lot of support. Then you have the Weapon keyword, the Kick keyword, the Tech keyword, and the Slam keyword. And they just feel like totally forgotten by the design team. Um, they just they never ever get things. They hardly have any characters that care about them. Like Slam got Mirio, but then they said or Punch. <laughs> you know, like Mirio probably should have only been a Slam character um, and not uh, been allowed to play with punches. But uh, May is given the tech and Chronostasis, but that's pretty much it for those characters. Weapon, I mean, a lot of characters are being held back right now just because weapons aren't that great. Um, you know, the weapon keyword as a whole is very lackluster. And then Kick, Kick got a lot of set one support, um, but has hardly gotten anything since. I think the, I think we only got one Kick in all of Undaunted Raid on Earth um, because we were looking at like a uh, Earth Overhaul build the other day. And uh, yeah, there's only one Kick in Undaunted Raid, but um I, maybe there's more on the other symbols. I was just looking at the earth symbol or my brother and I, but uh, yeah. So what bothers me is that like, why do we have to connect slam to charge and connect weapon to punch? Why can't these be their own things like this one slam and deadlock stun four? sweet, you know, finally some like pure slam support. Um, hopefully it doesn't go the way of things like confident counter strike, you know, that uh, because they only have the slam keyword, they're just never played by anybody ever. So that is my uh, that's my beef there is that I kind of wish that all the keywords were more even and there wasn't this clear. These four are amazing and these four are just side tier and we sometimes give them cards. Other than that, I'm really excited to see Breaker. I'm excited to see some more Jiro cards here and, uh, you know, stun four is always fun. OK, that brings me to uh, that was it for the design teaser, by the way. I know this has gone way over <laughs> what I expected it to go, but uh, Let's get let's finish with my official character predictions. We know there's going to be 17 characters. This is not including Toga and Ochako. I assume it's not including them. I assume they're separate as the uh, Heroes Clash decks or as the Clash decks. But um, yeah, let's jump into it. So first, the pro heroes. I think we're going to get Endeavor 3 and Hawks and Best Genus, Edshot, Mount Lady, Ryukyu, and Mur Murko. And... Mount Lady's already been 100% confirmed. Genus is 100% confirmed. Hawks and Endeavor 3 are 100% confirmed. Edgeshot, Ryukyu, and Mirko all got art that was shown off during these art preview reveals that we've had the last uh, week or week and a half. And so I'm assuming that they're getting characters to go along with those attacks. We will see. And then 1A Students, Midoriya 5, Todoroki 4, Bakugo 4, and Jiro 2. Again, Midoriya 5 is pretty much confirmed. I think Bakugo is pretty much confirmed. Todoroki and Jiro, not so much, but we've already seen art reveals for them. I assume they're coming. Villains, we've got Hood Nomu, Gentle Criminal, and Dobby 3. Dobby 3 really confuses me from a story arc standpoint. I'm not really sure where Dobby was at the end of Season 4. Somebody said maybe he like saves Haya Nomu. I can't remember if he does that. Um, I just remember Endeavor winning and like holding his fist up and everybody cheering and clapping and uh, saying how awesome he was. Um, so, but, you know, we had an art reveal come out and it said Dobby is returning to the fight in Jetburn with so-and-so. So I don't know if that meant Dobby 3 is confirmed or if that meant we're giving another attack to Dobby's. I assume it means Dobby 3 is confirmed. So there's the villains. Others, I assume we're getting Itsuka Kendo. She plays a pretty big role in like the uh, beauty contest at the school festival. And we didn't get her cards in the uh, the card game kind of skipped over the provisional license exam. We got a few cards from it just as attacks, but we didn't weren't getting characters. And so I assume we're getting characters um, for these individuals now. So I think Kendo's coming. I think uh, Yarashi's coming, the uh, fierce whirlwind character. And I think we're getting Utsushimi. We already had some Utsushimi art previewed today in the art reveals. So I assume she's getting a character to go along with it. And uh, I think it would be a real shame if we missed the opportunity to get these three characters into the game. So if you add up 7 plus 4 is 11, plus 3 is 14, plus 3 is 17, this would be all 17 characters in the set. I would, I am about 80% confident that I have it right here. Uh, maybe we get some promo characters like uh, Gang Orca or Tokoyami. I would really like to see Gang Orca come into the, uh, come into the game and Tokoyami, it feels like it's been a while 
you know, Tokoyami 2 was, um, was that set 2 or was that set 1? I know it was already out when I came into the game. So we've gone, you know, beyond a year now with no new Tokoyami character. So it does feel like his time to get a new character. You know, maybe I'm wrong about Kendo or Yarashi or Utsushimi, and it's actually Tokoyami or Orca. We shall see. But I am feeling pretty... I'm feeling pretty confident that these are the 17. And if these are the 17, this is awesome. This is an incredible set from the characters. So you remember that video I made earlier this week where I talked about what went wrong with um, Heroes Clash and why it's the most underrated set? And uh, one of the things that went wrong with it was that it only had eight characters, none of which were very hype. Here, like, we are getting 17 characters, and every single one of them is awesome. Like, there's not a single one of these characters that I'm not extremely excited for. Um, maybe Edge Shot, because I can hardly remember Edge Shot in the show. But the other six pros I remember very vividly in the show. Um, of course, these students are all fan favorites. These villains are fan favorites. Um, criminal, Gentle criminal. You know, listen, I didn't like his character arc, but... Uh, I think he has to be in the card game, right? And uh, and he was inter he was an interesting person. Um, he just, you know... <laughs> the problem was Gentle Criminal had to follow up Overhaul. So you had this incredible, amazing villain, and then we follow up with Gentle Criminal. So, you know, maybe if he didn't follow the Overhaul arc, I would have liked him more. Um, and then I'd be very excited for all three of these characters. So this is going to be an awesome set if this is how it goes. And uh, that is going to do it for me. That was everything about the design teaser.